who made what change to your Kubernetes cluster? That is an interesting question. And often you do not get the answer by just seeing the logs or describing the pod because you won't know what changed when it happened and how it happened and who did that. So this whole process is called auditing. Like you want to have an audit of the cluster and you want to record the events. And yes, there is the concept in Kubernetes called auditing, which is very important from Kubernetes CK certification point of view as well. So in this video, let's try to understand what Kubernetes auditing is, some of its concepts, and then let's try to do a scenario that will help you in understanding the scenario that comes in Kubernetes CK certification as well. <laughs> So as the name suggests, Kubernetes auditing means we are auditing events. Now auditing events means it is auditing everything. Like as soon as the request that goes to the Kubernetes API server, everything gets recorded. So there is a file called audit policy. Now in that audit policy, there are two main things. One is the stages. There are different stages that gets recorded. And then another is the log levels. So let's try to understand the stages first. So there are four different stages as soon as the request comes in, which is the request received stage. So this is also captured. And then is the response started. This stage is only for the long running request. Example, the watch. Then comes the next stage, which is response complete. That means when there are no more bytes to be sent and the response body is complete. And the next stage is panic if there is any error that is generated. Now, oftentimes you do not require to audit all the stages. Like you don't, do not need all the stages to be captured by your audit configurations. So in your audit policy file, you can actually define omit stages. Like you can define for this particular resource. So you define the log level in the log level. In that rule, you will be able to define like a level should be this. We'll come to the levels. And for that, we want to omit this particular stage. And the next portion is of what resource. So these are the three main things in the audit policy file, which we'll uh, do when we are actually doing a particular demo. Now coming to the audit policy, like I said, every structure is defined in audit.kates.io API group. And there are four different levels that are very critical to understand first is none none means that don't log any events that match this rule for this particular resource sometimes you need that metadata is something that we usually encourage that you should log the metadata request like uh, the user who requested that particular change the timestamp the resource the verb verb meaning like if it is kubectl get pods the get is the verb over there and here the request and the response body won't be there. Next is the request that is above the metadata plus the request of the body, but the response is not logged. And next is the request response means it does the metadata request and the response body as well. So this particular log definitely will add more weight to the logs that will get generated. So to avoid too much of logs problem, you need to very careful define in your audit policy, what all has to be logged for what all resources at what all levels. That's pretty much it. So you need to define what all needs to be logged for what all Kubernetes resources. And if there are any stages that needs to be omitted, once you define all these, you can store these where this will be stored actually. So uh, there are two audit backends. So one is at the log backend, which is written to the files and one is the webhook. So webhook can actually send it to the external HTTP API and you can have the webhook and you can define that in the log backend. So there are the API server flags, which definitely are the key. So four key flags are audit log path to specify the log path and the backend to be used to write these audit events. Second is the audit log max age, defining the maximum number of days to retain the old log, very critical component. Next is the audit log max backup, defines the maximum number of audit log files to be retained. And next is the audit log max size, define the maximum size in MB for the audit log 
before it gets rotated. So these are the four critical things that you define for the audit log backend. And sometimes you might be asked a specific thing from this particular plans. And then you have to obviously define the audit policy file and the audit log path, which we'll do when we enable the log audit policy. Basically, we'll try to understand how to enable the audit policy for a Kubernetes cluster. One last thing before we move to the demo is that the events which are sent are sent in batches. And there are three different modes for that, which are the audit webhook mode or audit log mode. One is the batch, one is the blocking, and one is blocking strict. So batch is the default one, and then blocking blocks the API server response on processing each individual event. And blocking strict means whenever there is a failure, it completely fails the whole request, kube API server request. So now let's try to see it in action and see how this works. So I have a Kubernetes cluster. It's a two node cluster. Now what we are going to do is let's consider a scenario. So let's say you want to log secrets at metadata level and you want to record deployments at request response level. So what we do is in the Kubernetes documentation, we go to auditing. And in this particular file, there is something which is called audit policy. Now, yes, you have access to the Kubernetes documentation when you are giving the certification. So this is pretty critical. Go to the auditing docs and you'll be able to clearly see the file, audit policy file. So let's copy this particular file and then we'll try to understand what is this and we'll try to remove and add whatever stuff is required. In the meanwhile, let's first go to slash etc slash Kubernetes and we'll create a folder mkdir audit cd audit now in this particular folder let's create a policy.yaml so vi policy.yaml now this is the policy.yaml file that we just copied from the kubernetes documentation so first like i said we can omit stages request received because all the requests received will add too much of noise now in the level of request response so we said we want to log the request response but for the deployments so we'll just change this to add request re response deployments and we want the met config maps and secrets so we'll add resource as config maps and secrets and that's it let's save this and let's also create directory for the logs, mkdir logs and let's touch and logs audit.log. And this is where we want to store the logs. So let's go back in order to enable the audit policy. We definitely need to edit the cube API server YAML and we need to add the flags over there. So let's start adding them. So the first flag that it has to be added is the audit policy file. So we are saying we want our audit policy file is etc kubernetes audit policy.yaml audit log path is etc kubernetes audit logs audit.log the log max size as explained before and the audit log max backup are set to three and two the next thing so this is not all so the next thing that you need to do is you need to mount the volumes and the volume mount so let's go to the volume section below now this is very important because this is where it consumes most of the time and also it is prone to errors so here in the volume mount you have to specify two volume mounts one is etc kubernetes audit policy.yaml with the name audit read only true and one is the audit log with read only false now this goes in the volume sections as well so let's go to the volume so in the volumes, you create two. One is the audit log and you define the host path and for the audit as well. And the same as you have seen above, we have used audit log and audit in the mount paths as well, audit and audit log. So these are the changes that you have to do. So just to repeat four flags over here. And if there are any additional that you want to do and then volume, and the volume mount. Now let's save this. Obviously, once you save this, if you do kubectl get pods, it will be connection refused because the Kubernetes API server is restarting. So it will take a few minutes. But you need to be very careful. If you have made any mistake over here, then it won't restart. 
So one gotcha over here is that you should always take a backup of a server YAML so that if anything goes wrong, you can switch back to the previous working Kubernetes API server YAML file manifest and your, you can again restart working on the scenario. And now again, don't spend too much time on this particular scenario if things are not working at all. So you need, you can move and come back if you have any time left, because this scenario has a lot of changes in this file and you know, nothing, if nothing works, like if CTL get ports doesn't work, you have to very carefully uh, check the indentation and all these things. So make sure to not spend too much time on this and be very careful. So you can see the API server has been restarted. Also, let's see in the audit if the logs are coming up. And we can see there are a lot of logs which are coming up. The metadata level secrets is coming up and everything is started to record in this particular file. Now there was one different change that I did before the deployment logs started to get captured is instead of just double quotes, the group for the deployment is apps. Now let's create deployment, kubectl create deploy demo to hyphen hyphen image nginx, kubectl get pods. Now let's try to see the audit logs. And now we'll be able to see the deployments log have started to get captured. And if we see grep nginx, we are able to see all the stuff related to nginx, like created termination grade grace period, because the event that is captured is at the log level of request response. And you can see who created. So there was a create by the username Kubernetes admin that was done from the source IP of this. And the deployment with the name of demo two was getting created. So this is how deep you can get when you are working with auditing in Kubernetes and you just keep changing the policies and you'll be able to capture the required and the right set of information which needs to be recorded. Now, as you can see, this particular request response file for a particular deployment is big. And as you keep increasing the log level, keep the log file keeps on getting big, bigger and bigger with more and more data. So for that, there are different log levels that we have discussed stages that can be omitted. And then for specific Kubernetes objects, specific things can be enabled. So I hope you got the gist of Kubernetes auditing, how it works, what are some of the gotchas, what are some of the concepts and what are some of the log levels, what are some of the stages and how you can do it end to end. You can see a small error in the deployment that I did. I just didn't put double quotes. Uh, I just put double quotes and didn't put apps. It didn't give any error, but it didn't capture the deployments. So you have to be very careful when you are doing it in the CKS exam. And that's how you'll be able to easily solve the auditing scenario in your CKS certification exam. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the entire playlist and press the bell icon so that you can easily and successfully pass your Kubernetes CKS certification. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.